Hello, our fabulous chemistry students. And the not-so-fabulous ones, too. Hello, everybody. Y'all are welcome. Yep. That, that's Monaco over there. And Milks is over there. And here we go with the last video in this lecture series for the new, uh, organic chemistry. Can I get a woohoo? Anyways, let's learn about the seven organic equations and get on with our lecture. Yep. So the first thing you got to know about is combustion. You've seen it in the Pogel, I hope. Right? Mm -hmm. And if you didn't do these, then it'll make the Pogel easier. Absolutely. Okay, so basically what's going to happen with the combustion is you're going to have a hydrocarbon on one side. Let's do uh, methane. There we go. Well, excuse me. You need oxygen present. So oxygen will always be a reactant. When these two things combust, they will always make carbon dioxide and water. So the generic equation is, yes, balance that bad boy. You need two more O's on the reactant side and we move it along. All right. So what you're looking for is... Oxygen is a reactant with a hydrocarbon because it's organic. And then you got carbon dioxide and water as a product. So those are must-haves. That's okay. how we recognize them so quickly. Right. And they're really fun to actually balance if we get into that later because whatever number of carbons are in that chain, that's how many CO2s you make. And so you're looking for the reactant O2 and the products water and CO2 combustion every time. You got it. Could be any hydrocarbon out there, so don't panic. Look for the other three, and you're good to go. That's it. That's what you're actually looking for. All right, we're going to do three before two, an addition reaction. This, this reaction is going to do just what it says. So if I take um, a double bond or a triple bonded hydrocarbon that is unsaturated, and I combine it with a halogen, I can make what's called a halide, and it, the halogens will just add right on. So, an alkene or an alkyne, but in our case, well, let's just stick to alkenes, at least that's what you're going to see anyways. I haven't seen an alkyne. Monaco, look, couldn't find an alkyne. Then you're going to get H2 or a halogen. Remember, the halogens are all diatomic. And they are simply going to make your halide, which is one of our functional groups that we saw, which is an organic with a... Uh, Halide on and it's saturated. You could also, if you're adding hydrogen in this scenario, you could be saturating there you go. your unsaturated hydrocarbon, and we would not call that a halide. So Correct. there's two possible products, but the way that my students were recognizing addition reaction is you got two reactants, one product. That's the key. So let's draw it out real quick just so we can see how that double bond breaks. Because you can see here, I do, I'm not full of hydrogen. And in this case, even though I'm adding chlorine on, if it was hydrogen, I'd be full of that. This is, this hydrocarbon now is going to get filled up with hydrogen and chlorine. So it will now become saturated. It just won't be saturated with hydrogen. It will be saturated with hydrogen and chlorine. You break that bond, and I can get two more atoms in there. Now I'm saturated, and I only have the one product. I like to say that you're adding addition, For the... Cost diatomic element across the double bond. And that's the other thing. It's always going to be a diatomic element that's going to be one of your reactants. Right. And that's why we don't see the alkynes as much, because we don't have triatomic elements. No, no, the, the alkynes, you do this twice. So right. you'd get addition across the triple bond, and then another addition across the double bond, and you would end up being saturated or a halide with four chlorines on it. You're right. not going to see that one. Know this one. That's it. Moving on. Notice, one product. That's the key. So substitution reaction. Now I'm going to specifically take a saturated alkane. So with that C2H6 now. Yep. Okay, and then add on, again, a halogen or the hydrogen. Uh, yep. And now what's going to happen is they're going to switch. And I'm going to get that halide or, you know, yeah, this one is actually not just hydrogen. It is a halogen. Because there wouldn't be a reaction with hydrogen. So it is a halide, halogen. We're going to make a halide with an acid. And what we're going to see is, because when we start drawing this thing out, alkane plus halogen goes to halide plus acid. We're going to see when we draw the alkane, there isn't room to add these chlorines. So because there isn't room to add, i got to switch out one hydrogen for one chlorine, 
And the substitution reaction literally substitutes one of the hydrogens for one of the chlorines in both molecules. The chlorine goes on to the hydrocarbon. A hydrogen's got to come off and hook up with the other Cl. And notice during the substitution reaction, I have two products. That's probably why this one was number two. It's like a single replacement from inorganic reactions, except we're stealing a hydrogen. There you go. Not an ion. So substitution, I have two products. Two reactants. Two reactants. The product being an acid is critical. That's a really easy way to recognize. HCl. There you right. go. Moving on. Let me see the substitution happening. Esterification. This one's kind of fun. This is what we call a dehydration polymerization. I'm going to make a bigger thing out of two littler things by removing water. So we're going to start out with a specifically organic acid. So it says acid up on the top. It's got to be specifically an organic acid. I need that Ku and an alcohol. And now I'm going to form all that stuff minus water. Basically, add them all together and then water over there. And Mr. Monaco, can you do me a favor real quick? Can you, in a different color, circle the H on the acid and the OH on the alcohol? Because that's where the water comes from. Okay, because remember, acids produce H+, and then the alcohol is going to kick off the OH, and that's what's going to give me my water, and then the other things hook up. So specifically, organic acid with an alcohol and that's going to form my ester with water. And because water is a product, that's why we call it dehydration. And do you, and we're going to go ahead right now and draw it all out. This is going to be fun. Check them out. Yo, go, Monaco. Go, Monaco. And when he does it this way, you're going to be able to see that OH and the H where they can really kind of hook up. And remember, if we're not. If we're not sure if that organic acid is going to kick off the OH, remember, it's an acid. So an acid's got to kick off an H+. We learned that two or three units ago. Dehydration, removing water. When I get dehydrated, I am without water. And there we go. There is esterification in a nutshell. I'm making an ester, basically. Mm -hmm. the, re the easy way to recognize it is an organic acid is a reactant, making a water as a product. I did that too. And esterification specifically makes esters. Saponification. Now, here we go. Now we're going to make a soap. We start with an ester that we just made in the last one. We take a fat and a base. Boom. Produce alcohol, usually glycerol, and specifically soap. So, soap is saponification. The words are not exact, but they are really, really close. All you got to know is saponification makes soap from a fat and a base. Glycerol is a type of alcohol because it has OHs. Alcohol. The triol. It's not the type of alcohol that gets you intoxicated, but it has an alcohol functional group. So, yeah, it's flammable. Yes. Fat and base makes soap is probably the key pieces right there. This is one of the biggest inventions in human history. Like, sure. seriously. Seriously. Right, here we go. Six, fermentation. Could be one of my favorites. I'm going to take sugar. I'm going to hook it up with an enzyme. And now I'm going to make alcohol and carbon dioxide. So fermentation makes alcohol. This is really how wine is made. Wine is fermented. I really don't know if we need to write that again. No, it's. I'm, I would be writing the same exact, exact thing. thing. So fermentation is making alcohol as a product. Are you good there? Last one. This is number seven. This one is a polymerization. There's really nothing for you to write. There isn't. But there's plenty for you to memorize. Sure. So basically, I'm going to take two things and make a big thing out of it. I'm going to link them up. Polymerization, read the background there. It's really, really simple. It's making a chain. Yes. Each monomer is like one link in the chain. You link it together with another one, another one, another one, another one. And you right. eventually get this chain that is how long? It doesn't stop. Right. That's why we usually call it growing them. Yeah. We grow polymers. 
Because um, they get bigger and bigger and bigger as we keep them under the right conditions. The important thing you need to do in order to recognize that a polymerization has occurred, go so back I'm one slide, I'm going to circle yep, a couple yep. things, is you have to recognize the notation. There's two ways to see that a polymer's happened. We've got N here. That means some number of these guys. Like how many? 100, 1,000, 100,000, 200,000. Correct. Five. It means it is a repeating unit. Correct. Over and over and over. So that would be the monomer, mm -hmm. and then 10 of those things makes a polymer. So you see the monomers listed there doesn't have lines going outside. But the polymer does. does. That implies that there's bonded to some other of itself. Another way to see it, and I can't predict exactly which way it will be on the Regents exam, but is to show a dot, dot, dot. Kind of like a run-on sentence. Yes. A dot, dot, dot. And that's over on the left That side. just shows you that it's going to keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. It, it, who knows when it ends? You just, once you see it, you know it's a polymer. Another huge giveaway is the prefix poly. Poly means multiple, many, okay? So uh, polyethylene means many ethylenes put together. So ethylene's the monomer. Polyethylene is the polymer of polymerization of ethylene. Ethylene. So. Take a bunch of ethylenes and hook it together. Uh, really quick, we see condensation, polymerization. Right. That's a dehydration also. Notice I'm taking two H's and an O. That's a water. Right, so when I dehydrate, condensate, we, all those kind of scientific words. So words. a brief cross-cutting theme, your liter uh, biology class, living environment, you studied DNA and how it made codons and those coded for amino acids. They are. Well, those amino acids, when they get hooked up to each other, they go through a condensation polymerization and make your proteins in your body. Yeah. So what makes you you is atoms and polymerization. Yeah. Bio, biochemistry. Biochemistry. A whole nother year of study in college. Ooh, fun, fun. But guess what? We're done. Yeah. You need to be able to recognize the seven organic reactions. When we talk about some of that, you know, uh, rudimentary stuff, alkane right. plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide and water. Who that? That kind of stuff. Recognize the seven. Memorize the seven. Yeah, nothing in the reference tables to help us. Move on with yourself. Do the castle. Do the pogles. The pogles. You're already done with another unit all of a sudden. As soon as you're ready to test, let me know. Sir.